you, Mrs. Deputy Speaker. Um, I agree very much with my honourable friend, the member for Stratford and Urmston, when she says that there should be no censorship of lawful views and that there are many pressing issues for students that this Tory government is not addressing. However, I'm convinced that there is mountain evidence that female academics' ability to discuss their rights in law is already being curtailed in our higher education sector. Now, Guidance issued by the Equality and Human Rights Commission in 2019 notes that freedom of expression is a key part of the higher education experience. Sharing ideas freely is crucial for learning and allows students to think critically, challenge and engage with different perspectives. And that higher education providers should dis encourage discussion and an exchange of views on difficult and controversial topics. Yet, in the last few years, it's come to light that many women in universities across the UK are being censored, harassed and threatened for the simple act of trying to engage in debate and discussion about the impact of gender self-identification on women's sex-based rights. At Oxford, and has been spoken this evening, uh, Professor of Modern History Selina Todd, whose academic specialism is the lives of working-class women, has been given security guards to accompany her to lectures after receiving threats from activists. And in late 2019, Essex University rescinded an invitation to Open University Professor Joe Phoenix, who had been due to speak at a seminar about uh, trans rights and imprisonment. Protesters labelled her a transphobe and the seminar was cancelled. And this is what concerns me, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's the labelling of people, especially women, in this way. It concerns me. Because to seek and to ask is to learn and not to be written off. Around the same time, a Jewish professor of human rights law at Dryden University, Rosa Friedman, had been invited to speak at an event on the Holocaust at Essex, only for the invitation to be withdrawn because of her views on gender identity. And both professors Friedman and Phoenix re received an apology after Essex University commissioned a review of their proceedings. But it's not only academics whose freedom of expression is being restricted. A PhD student at Bristol University from the Dominican Republic, Raquel Rosario Sanchez, has been bullied and threatened for her involvement in events convened to discuss, convened to discuss proposed reform of the Gender Recognition Act. The second female rector of Edinburgh University, Anne Henderson, wrote recently of her experience of being targeted and harassed by students after she retweeted the details of an event feminist campaign groups had organised for MPs in autumn 2018. At times she feared for her safety on campus, but received minimal support from senior management. And we know that feminist campaigner and journalist Julie Bindle spoke at an event at Edinburgh University on women's sex-based strikes in June 2019 and was attacked as she left. The individual was later charged by Police Scotland. The event was attended by a number of members of the Scottish Parliament and our Labour colleague Jenny Mara later said that never in more than 25 years of going to political meetings have I felt the intimidation that I felt then. In 2021, women across the UK are being censored, harassed and threatened for simply trying to debate and discuss their rights. This is a wholly unacceptable state of affairs and I call on all members to join me in condemning these pernicious developments. But the issue that we need to discuss as parliamentarians is when freedom of speech becomes hate speech and vice versa. And that is what we should be di discussing in this House. We should address what is legally allowed and isn't. And I know that the speech that I'm making this evening will probably you know, follow with a torrent of abuse on social media, but members of Parliament and legislators, our responsibility lies in speaking truth to power, Mr Deputy Speaker. And our Labour front bench is right. The party opposite tend to be hypocrites. They are hypocrites, particularly with other bills we've seen pass through Parliament. But I understand the need for a balanced argument. And we need to be able to speak truth to power. Thank you. Thank you very much. We should hold them. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. And uh, can I just declare at the start my uh, interest as the uh, Vice Chairman of the APPG on Durham University. And uh, I, 